Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden coming to you from Prospect Mountain in Woodford, Vermont, where I'm out cutting some new single track snowshoe trail for my race on March 12th. Be there. Anyway, I'm listening to a great book called Making Things Happen as I'm out here making something happen. I had this idea in my head for this new beautiful single track through a spruce forest and I'm turning that idea into reality. So far I've got about 400 meters of sinuous single track cut through these spruce trees and I'm hoping to make about a kilometer before I'm all done. And that's a lot of work. And I haven't been in the best state. I've been in a rather low point. But just because I've been at a low point doesn't mean that I haven't been making things happen. All too often when we're in a low state, we want to create ideas, we want to create fantasies, we want to dream about new possibilities because that makes us feel better. And then now that we feel better, well, we don't really have to take action because the problem solved. I feel better so I can just hang around the house feeling better for a little while until I get bored or until the feeling wears off and uh-oh, what do I do now? So something that is a really key component of my life and my process is to fill up my gas tank with creative projects that are really simple in their execution. Now cutting through a spruce forest, is that easy? No, it's not easy. But is it complicated? Not at all. It's simple yet effortful. And that's really important. If it was complicated and effortful, it wouldn't fill me up. It would drain me. I'd be overwhelmed by it. I've already got too much complication in my life. That's one of the reasons that I go into my low points. I just get overwhelmed with too many projects, too many ideas, too many people that want to reach out to me and, and seek help or collaboration. And it's like, too much. All good, but too much. Can't take it. And then something potentially negative happens, like breaking my toes, and now it's like, wow, okay, what do I do? I can't run to fill my gas tank anymore, so I've got to find something else. Running is not complicated. You get dressed, you go outside, and you run. Effort, yes. Complication, no. Very simple. It fills tank. So, in order for me to fill my tank in those low points, I engage in something effortful, gets the heart moving, gets the blood pumping, changes brain chemistry. Yes, effort does change brain chemistry, which is why you should exercise. Not just good for your body, good for this too. But secondly, I get to accomplish something. Each little step that I make, every five or ten feet that I move through this forest, is a sign of progress. It's a sign of accomplishment. It's like, hey, I made something happen. I didn't just think about it. I actually am out here doing it and I can see the results. I can run back and forth on my trail that's right now a couple minutes long. Eventually maybe it'll be five or six minutes long. It doesn't matter. I'm making something happen. I'm taking an idea and putting it into practice. But it's a simple idea. And that fills me up. So when I'm done, after say five or six hours today, and I go home, my tank is filled. My feeling of self-efficacy has increased. And this is really important because often when people are coming out of a challenging point, they don't want to admit it to themselves and they definitely don't want to admit it to other people. So we try to hide what we've been through. We try to hide the potential uh, weaknesses we might have in that moment, the weak links in our chain. We're really vulnerable when we're coming out of a low point and we don't have a lot of energy and we don't have a lot of follow through. So it's difficult for us to follow up, which is one of the things he keeps talking about in this book, following up. So rather than following up, and rather than coming out of your low point with a smile on your face, this veneer of, oh, everything's great, don't worry, I'm bouncing back, I'm getting back in the game, I'm gonna take on this complicated stuff, and sure, I'll commit to that, and yeah, I'll meet you for lunch, and yeah, I'll answer 20 emails, and yes, I'll do this, and yes, I'll do that. 
because we want to put on this image of everything's great, don't worry about me, it's fine, I'm bouncing back, I'm following up. So what I want to suggest to you, which is what I'm doing right now, today, is following down. How do you follow down? Following up, as he talks about, that's great. But the people that need to listen to this book are people that are challenged by organization, which means they're often overwhelmed. And if you're overwhelmed, you're often down. You're often hard on yourself. You're often self-critical. You're often feeling like, I can't do it. I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know how to get it together. I've got all these great ideas. And man, if I could just put them all together, everything would just magically work. But I can't follow up. And that's the problem. You need to follow down. What do you do the moment after you come out of a down period? How do you follow down? Do you put on the fake smile? Do you commit to 100 projects or to meetings or phone calls or emails or something at work? Or do you say, wait a minute. That's a cool <laughs> Do you say, wait a minute, my face is freezing. Or do you say, hmm, down, how am I going to follow that? With this gigantic thing that's probably going to overwhelm me? No. With this really simple thing that involves some effort that's going to make me feel like I'm accomplishing something, make me feel powerful in the world, make me feel like I have an effect, at least on a small piece of something real? Yeah, let's do that. Let's fill up our tank a little bit. Let's not engage in something complex right now. Let's not engage with lots of different people right now and say yes to their demands. Following down is about acknowledging that you're in a tough spot and saying, hey, right now, my tank is not full. I am not working at maximum capacity. That's my start line. So let's work from there. You know what? This isn't a good week. Maybe next week. I'm not even sure about next week. But let's touch base again next week and see how I'm doing. You follow down. You allow yourself to be where you are. And you slowly build yourself back up. You don't worry about the end result. You just engage in the process and move towards something where you can see that you've made a difference. When I'm done with this trail, hundreds of people are going to race through here on March 12th, and then hopefully hundreds if not thousands of people will continue to use this trail as they come up to the ski area. And to me, that feels good. I'm creating something that's going to be used by other people that hopefully they'll really enjoy. I'm creating moments of enjoyment for people, whether that's real or not, I don't know, but my brain is telling me, yeah, people are going to like this. So it feels good for me to do it. And I'm volunteering. I don't get paid to do this. I'll probably spend 60 hours on this trail and I won't get paid a dime, but my tank will be full. And that's how I'm following down. So that when I go back into town, I can answer a couple emails. Maybe I can make a phone call. Maybe I can edit a video. <laughs> or do something else that is challenging and potentially really complicated. So if you're stuck, yeah, it's great to listen to people who are organizational experts and they're gonna talk about following up, but maybe you're not ready to follow up yet because you gotta be up to follow up. But if you're down, let yourself be down and follow down gentle, fill up that tank little by little and then eventually you'll be up and then you can follow up all right I gotta move I'm freezing standing still here ha <sighs> I love you guys see ya I want to talk to you today about coming back because that's what I have been working on myself mm -hmm.